And the next place I want to look at is East Dyke, which you can. Uh, which you can see there. And there's a public footpath that goes all the way along the lead stretch, which finishes there. Here's a, a sewage works at Thorpe Arch. Which is a long, long way. And even though it's a public footpath, it's never walked. It's absolutely dog rough. So the easiest way to see the top end of East Dyke is to go down this little lane here. This is part of the Ebor Way. This is, on the left there is Boston Spa. You can see there, this is Newton Kime. Bit of a Roman fort there. You used to be able to drive down here, but it was really rough. But now uh, they've put a gate on there to stop you. So I've just parked on the verge here, on this main road, and I'll just wander down there and have a look at uh, this bit here. The top end of East Dyke from the right bank. In days of yore, <laughs> if you're fishing the Boston Spa Angling Club day ticket down here, you used to drive down here and, uh, and park at this point. And then meander our way down there to the river, which is not very far. So here we are on the river wharf. And over there is Leeds Dasa East Dyke Top. He only fished it once from this side on a day ticket. Fished opposite this little tree here and had three lovely barbel. And the river was carrying them out three feet. And the river swings away down there past Newton Kine village. So over there on the lead side, there's absolutely <laughs> no evidence of any fishing whatsoever. It is a long, long walk up here from the uh, access point on the left bank of the East Lake Farm. It's very, very peaceful today. Seems to be quite an even depth all the way across. It's a beautiful bit of river. That's looking back up towards Boston Spa and the old railway viaduct. They go over the bridge.
on the left goes to Wick Hill. is a, a lead sign. So we just climb over these footsteps, foot, climb over this dial and follow this public footpath sign and you can see there, just half hidden in the bushes, the Leeds Dutter sign. And there you get your first sign of the, of the wharf as it makes that big horseshoe right round. Lots of cows down there. And just make our way down this bank and we'll have a look at the uh, upstream side first of all. So we just need to go over that little bridge down there. So you can see the farm buildings there and uh, just drop down this bank. It doesn't look very much now when you've, when you've been fishing and it's miserable and it's wet. All any gear up there is a real pain but uh, it's worth it. You come down and the public footpath goes across this little bridge. You just have to be careful how you go here. <laughs> it's, uh, this bit's cracks and falling away. Unfortunately the grass has been cut, so it makes walking along here much, much easier. You can see how low the river is, there are lily pads all over the place there. You don't have to go very far before you find a peg. So somebody's been fishing here. Let's go down and have a look at it. You can see it's very deep. Even with the river as low as this, it's very deep. It swings away around there to the right, makes its way down about a quarter of a mile, and then takes a very sharp left to go around in a big horseshoe. And it's come about another hundred yards. There's a way through here. This oil seed rape. Takes you down to this sort of dried mud bank. It seems so peaceful today, but when there's five or six feet of water in the river, it absolutely tanks through here. A very tight peg. A 
the same stretch. These two pegs aren't very far apart. That's another one, that looks really nice. There's sort of willows and snaggy things on the other side. I think if you just cast across to them, it's a sort of a place where Barbara would like to hang out, but uh, easy to get snagged in there. Not a steep peg. When he's carrying a couple of three feet of water, it would be very difficult to fish there. Again, opposite, you've got those willows there. This is a very popular peg. So we've got some steps. Again, the willows opposite. A big reed bed opposite there. Well, this is the bottom of the first field, and you can see the farm there, East Lake Farm on the hill, on the horizon. And this go over this stone, where this big lump of concrete is. Is it stone? I think it's maybe stone. Uh, and have a look down the next field. Fortunately, they've all been cut. The hay, some curlews and oyster catchers. Oh, you were just coming in the land there. Eh? Mm. Three of them all gone. A lovely bird with this big long beak. And that plaintive cry they have. A long way away. And over there are a pair of oyster catches. Again, a lovely bird. Orange legs and uh, orange beak and that black and white plumage. I was just standing on the outside of this bend in the second field down. It's a bit overcast, nice and warm. And as I say, the uh, walking is easy. <laughs> and this is obviously a cattle drink, and this field is grazed. be poppies this time of year. They're beautiful. And more to come. Well, if you don't mind the walk, this is an easy place to fish, is this? And you have that big bank of willows overhanging the water there, just down, or just upstream. I'm approaching the, uh, the bottom of the uh, second field. And over there you can see uh, Newton Kyne Village. And at the bottom of the field is this little stile. And just down on the left hand side, somebody seems to have been fishing at some time. It seems a bit 
featureless. There must be something about it. Well, between the second and third field, somebody sees <laughs> me having a right go. Uh, this Himalayan Baltram. There must, there must be a reason for it. And brings you up to this little gravelly bed. And just look at up, that opposite there. Deep. Well, I was overhanging the water. Yeah, beautifully, it just quickens up a little bit there, but just a little bit of extra pace on it. Well, whoever walked all this way, <laughs> I went to all this trouble. I wish you every success. It's the third field, and uh, Somebody's very kindly been along here and trimmed it. Well, another little gravelly bed. Not surprisingly, somebody's been fishing here sometime. Because this looks like an island. There's a deep pool downstream of it. See the streamy water there on this side. Those willows lying in the water. And a great place for barbell that must be. Wonderful. Another peg. Seems a fair number of people walk up here. It's a long way, it must be, you know, I would think it must be nearly a mile. But looking at that, I'm not surprised. Somebody getting ready for Saturday, the 16th of June, the new season begins. Yeah, you can see the water comes down. A long, long glide and then breaks off, so runs down these shallows here and splits. The main floor comes down the left side, but the uh, this floor down the right hand side as well. Lovely reflections on that uh, breaking water. It looks like a big pile of peg markers. Well, the river comes downstream, swings around right. Somebody's ready for the off. Well, this is as far as I intend to go. If it goes up there for miles, comes down, swings around here. Very deep on this side, around the corner, to that island there where it splits. And uh, that seems to be about as far as people are prepared to walk. So if I see this, it's a lot further than I'm prepared to walk. So good luck. It's a lovely walk anyway, without carrying your gear. It's a very, very pleasant walk down the river. Lots of things to see. And very, very peaceful. Well, having walked down three fields from the sort of Eastlake farm. I just have a look downstream. So come down the back and over that stile there into that lovely field of buttercups. Fisherman style. It's, it's probably a good time to come to this bottom end because these beasts are all sitting down chewing the cud in this warm sunshine. There's uh, no 
Well, bullocks can be decidedly frisky, which can be a bit unnerving if you're not used to it. Oh, this lovely flower on the bag, I think it's some kind of nicotinia. Uh, it's a beautiful smell, particularly in the evenings. It attracts you to moths, it's a sort of strange peppery smell. But lovely in this sunshine. So whoever comes round the corner and the this bank. <laughs> As you can see there, swings out the side of that little island and goes away where they downstream. You can see he's like farm and uh, this big cattle drink. If you want to fish the lower reaches way over there, it's very tempting to cut across these fields but uh, it's not allowed, you have to follow the river back round, which makes it quite a long walk. There are not many opportunities to fish down this uh, left bank, it being undercut. In fact, I was thinking the flood, it's quite dangerous to get near the edge. It gets a great lump breaks off and you're standing on it. But you can see just how uh, how dry it's been. The size of that lily pad over there, those lily pads. If this was a pond, you'd be looking for tension there. Who knows there's any tension in the river? You never hear of them being caught. So where these lilies are, the river swings sharp left. And on this side, on the inside of the bend, of course, it deposits lots of sand and gravel. She's now a cattle drink, a big cattle drink. The deeper water is on the far side. And the river makes its way down there under the bridge at Tadcaster. And the lower limit is uh, way down there at the bottom of this field. So there you have it, East Dyke. What a wonderful fishery it is. Miles. <laughs> Miles. Uh, water of every description. I'm very lucky to have it. He's Dyke farm behind and young beast chewing the cud in front. A very, very peaceful scene.